So I started another canning project yesterday. I did not film the beginning of it because I do have two videos on the whole process of making chicken broth and like chicken noodle soup scenario for uh, pressure canning. So I will make sure to tag those for you guys. I'm really trying to bust out a lot of my broths and stews right now simply because this garden is really going to start producing in the next week or two. I've gotten my first handful of tomatoes, I've gotten some peppers, I've gotten some cucumbers, and really I think come like another week these harvests are really going to start rolling through, which I'm really excited about. But also, I wanted to get my broths done and my stews done simply for the matter, when I do this much canning in the summertime, toward fall I kind of need a break to be completely honest so I want to have a lot of those broths and stews already done that way come fall when I'm like craving that type of food I'm not having to spend a ton of time pressure canning even though pressure canning in the fall is way easier than the summer because this heat's been intense lately <laughs> I was able to get 14 quarts and then I have these three pints right here that I'm actually going to go ahead and throw into my freezer and I will use those first. I wish I actually had more of these handy dandy twist lids instead of using some of these but these are some of the rings and lids I told you guys that were completely damaged uh, last week so I'm just going to go ahead and throw them on this and they will go in the freezer. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Be careful. So I actually like to harvest my tomatoes in the evening. It's one of the few things I like to harvest in the evening. One of those reasons being is when the tomato is left throughout the day, those sugars condense making a sweeter fruit. And with me making a lot of sauce, these are all Roma varieties, I want a sweet, dense sauce. So I like to pick these at night. I also like to pick them when they're kind of like this, not fully red, but they're getting really close. And I will let these ripen on my counter for a few days, mostly for the reasoning squirrels will start to steal them when they get even more ripe than this. And I like to try to avoid that. But one thing I noticed as I was going through and looking at these, I need to go through and pick more, um, is I actually have a few here that ripened because of blossom end rot. So if you see this on your tomato, this means there is a calcium deficiency. I actually did notice that one of these green ones actually had it on there. I need to go through all of them. One thing that's great is it is reversible. You just need to kind of feed your plants, which I was already thinking that there was a handful of things in my garden that needed to be fed. So I get this question quite often and it's what do I feed my garden with? 
honestly it's kind of anything that's organic i've used granules i've used liquids i'm actually going to be doing something new tonight i got sent a really cool sprayer and i have some organic worm castings so i'm actually going to spray the whole garden with worm castings tonight and i'm really excited about that so one thing that's really cool about worm castings in particular is when that solution is sprayed on leaves those leaves can actually absorb those nutrients so i'm really really excited to do that and also it's not going to harm anything either i like to do everything organic around here um, i've never fed anything non-organic in my garden i will with house plants uh, but as far as like food and stuff goes um no, I typically just use compost, any organic feed, um, and tonight I'm going to do that worm casting spray all over the place. So I am going to get the few tomatoes off that I need to get off, see how many have blossomed and rot, uh, and get this whole garden watered before I start spraying everything. I want everything to be nice and moist, that way when I spray all of the castings on top, it can kind of just absorb through. So it looks like I caught it pretty early. It was just some of the newer fruits on like the tops of a handful of plants minus these two. So I'm glad I caught it early. That was the one I was trying to find earlier. It's the biggest one out of all of them, unfortunately. So I actually just pulled a handful of red onions and one Spanish yellow. Looks like my red ones are just clonking out first again. They were my first to not do as well last year, but I figured I'd give them one more try. These are a Cabernet Red. I have three varieties going. This whole bed behind me is Australian Brown, then I have Cabernet Red and Spanish Yellow. So what's interesting is last year I grew the Spanish Yellow and Cabernet Red. The Spanish yellow is actually a long day variety, and if you did not know, there's three varieties of onions. There's short day, inter intermediate, no, yeah, intermediate, and then there's also long day. So where I'm at, Kansas Zone 6B, we're kind of right in the middle of that zone there. But the long days did really well for me last year, and so far they're looking like the biggest bulbs coming out of the garden at the moment. We will see come probably like another two or three weeks once they're done bulbing out. But my Cabernet Reds were the first to actually clonk out last year as well. But I figured I'd give them one more try because there's not that many intermediate, uh, I always wanna say indeterminate because of the tomatoes, but intermediate varieties of onions uh, for some reason, just because I mean, you're either long day or you're short day and then you have this middle zone. So I might end up doing a bunch of long day. I don't know, these, are, these Australian Browns are doing pretty well now. They were kind of struggling there for a little bit. Uh, but everyone's looking really good, apparently, minus uh, these Cabernet Reds. But I'm gonna get these hung up in the garage with uh, the garlic, and then I'm gonna get everything uh, sprayed, like I mentioned earlier. <laughs> A good indicator that your onion is done is if it's flopping like that. That's not going to continue to grow. So if it's flopping, pull it. Not too shabby of a harvest this morning. It is definitely a bunch of odds and ends though. I have, what, three cherry tomatoes, four cucumbers, and a handful of different peppers and herbs. So I actually, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this, I'm gonna try to figure it out. I've been drying a lot of the peppers right now just because I haven't had enough 
to really make salsa and I actually still have enough pickled peppers downstairs from last year that I don't really know if I really need to pickle more peppers. We did not go through them as fast as I thought. We went through them really fast in the summer and then once winter came, it kind of just kept forgetting about them. Really good in chilies though. But yeah, I've been using these cucumbers in my husband's sandwiches because I make him like a cream cheese, cucumber, lettuce, tomato, like herby sandwich. It's really yummy. Uh, but yeah, I've just been using all these odds and ends. But this morning I wanted to get up early simply for the fact I have a lot to do in this garden and the heat is coming back. We had a few days that finally dipped. I mean, our June was so hot. Um, I still need to get this bed flipped from where I harvested potatoes last week. I need to get that planted out. I also need to prune up a bunch of things and I need to deadhead a lot of my different flowers. I have a lot of dieback going on and the plants are telling me that they need some love. So I'm gonna get this inside and probably make me a second cup of coffee after I chug this one. Girls, get them. <laughs> <laughs> 